First of all, just give us an indication of uh, the sort of occupancy numbers and the impact that you've seen over the past three months. So, well, the industry has been uh, particularly hard hit by the uh, by the pandemic, um, and industry wide has seen around an eighty five percent reduction in in revenue, um, and that's happened relatively quickly over obviously a uh, a short period of time, and so that's now we're now in the process of bottoming out that curve and starting to uh, starting to prepare for a recovery. What does that recovery look like, though? Because, yes, we may see reopening of state borders in the next few weeks and, and next month, perhaps, but it's not likely that we'll be seeing a return of tourists, in particular from that main market of China, anytime soon with the quarantine restrictions still in place. That's correct. We, we expect to see a slow steady recovery um, over a number of months, looking out towards the end of the year and, and through 2021 as well. Really, when, when you look at the way the pandemic came uh, together and the way the restrictions um, came together initially, they started internationally, they then led to state restrictions and then down to the local restrictions that occurred. And we see it unravelling in a, in a similar way over a steady period. So initially we'll start with the staycations and the local local travel within the states before we start to see interstate travel opening up, uh, which we hope to see in the coming months, um, and then and then uh, a travel bubble with New Zealand, uh, potentially some other Pacific states, and then the international borders. We have an expectation that they'll stay closed for some time because this is all about building confidence um, within for both businesses and the guests and that's why it's so key to be working closely with the government on this the, the industry uh, you know, directly employs its tourism um, over 600,000 people and more indirectly and uh, almost 90,000 90, of those are uh, directly uh, employed within within hotels um, and that there is going to be this lag in the recovery and so working very closely with government uh, both on the restrictions uh, easing as well as the uh, as, as well as the uh, the economy is going to be key to, to seeing the sector recover over a longer period of time. And Anthony, you're already starting to cater to the residential market. How much of your assets can actually be transformed into these so-called apartment hotels? Well. Over 50% of our assets are apartment hotels, so we're one of the leading providers of apartment hotels uh, in Australia and uh, New Zealand and Europe with our Adina brand. Uh, and they have been relatively more resilient. Um, they, have a, they have a different type of mix, so they're set up to be able to do short and long term. They're also very self-contained. Um, so when there's limited food and beverage um, opportunities available, people are able to control their own environment more um, through through laundries and kitchens uh, that are within the, the apartments and they have more space. So we are already uh, and been in that market for 50 years um, in the apartment hotel sector and we see that as one of the, the growth sectors coming out, of, coming out of the pandemic. What's going to happen to your assets that were still on the development pipeline? I believe you had a, around, what, 30 properties or so? Yes, we've actually uh, we actually had uh, had uh, a recent opening in Melbourne uh, with Vibe Melbourne, and there's probably a few layers to uh, to that um, to that question. The first is from a construction perspective, um, that has been relatively unrestrained, um, and and most of the construction is is on track for our openings. And what's important is that um, from our perspective, we have we have strong experience in each of the markets. We know them very well. We have established teams in those markets. And this is all about a long-term view. So, you, um, as a as a uh, investor in Australia and New Zealand, Germany, now going into Austria, Switzerland, being in Denmark, these are markets that, uh, in their respective regions, have managed this crisis uh, well. And uh, and we see the long-term uh, opportunities in these in these markets being uh, being still very uh, very attractive. And most importantly, what's going to be key going forward is that the, the product has to be competitive um, on the ground. And, and we're very proud of the brands we're launching um, throughout throughout our pipeline from the new TFE Hotel uh, collection property for right. the Hotel Britama, um, which will be opening in, uh, in New Zealand, uh, the Adina brands, five right. hotels, et cetera.